Good morning, guys. Gaius Hennen here with the Shelter Institute on day seven of our Woolwich build. It's a little bit cold this morning. We had a frost last night. We're starting to run out of things to do on this job. We still have the covered porch to build on the back side of the house, and we have to finish building the garage. Both of those projects involve two by six decking getting installed, so the porch roof will get covered. We need to put second floor decking on the garage, and then we're actually going to put a two by six plank on the roof as well. So all of that's on deck for today. All right, so no further ado, let's just get right into it. <laughs> Goofy. Simultaneous to the two by six decking getting installed on the garage, Ethan was working on the back porch. And again, the uh, foundation contractors put in piers for us and those piers ended up at multiple different elevations. So we took some laser level readings on the top of all of those and custom cut some six by six pressure treated blocks that established a level plane for our timbers to spring off of. The connection detail there is a piece of threaded rod that runs up about 12 inches into our timber post. It runs through the six by six pressure treated block and about 12 inches into the concrete pier. That threaded rod is held both into the pier and into the timber with a Simpson strong tie epoxy, and that will prevent the porch from lifting during a strong wind event. Those six by six blocks that we installed are capped with a standoff base. This is a composite base, again, by Simpson Strong Tie. That is a code required item. The porch timbers are hemlock. They are certainly not rot resistant, so we wanna elevate them above any moisture that will tend to sit. Uh, keeps the end of the post up out of the water when it rains by one inch. Yeah, it's a two-part thing, so some of it comes out the center and there's a white ring around the side that comes out, they all kind of mixed together. All right, so what we have to do is sort of squeeze it out all the way out the tip until it turns kind of a nice gray color, because it'll start out, you'll see like there's white and black kind of mixed in there. And then, yeah, you just want to stick it up in here as far as you can. And um, that tube should do these three posts and then you just want to kind of pull it out as you squeeze it in there so guys I, I haven't put any screw i was thinking it might be good to put some screws through from the uh, inside yeah yep. we have our po we're, you know we're pretty much Locked close to there. being lined up with our posts on the inside but okay. i think we could squeeze some at an angle it's slightly shifted out i mean like this line roughly represents the center of the post and this is shifted over just a little bit so you might want to start over here, Clayton. Those pressure treated blocks will end up being completely concealed. The framing for the floor system will sort of encapsulate those six by sixes. And then of course the decking gets put down on top of it. So they won't be visible in the finished product. What you'll see though is that composite standoff base. And then of course the timber springing off of that. All right, so they're all saying that it wants to go that way. I don't know if we're able to do that. Well, yeah, if we could set a screw down low, we could... Oh, yeah, right, right, right. We could wedge it over somehow. Could go a little more, like another half inch or so. I mean, I could use the puller on the top face. You yeah, know what I mean? it seems like it needs a little more than what I can give it here. Okay, I'll go grab that. Perfect. Get it, dude. Get it. Thank you. 
Okay, started here. Okay. I'll probably go in and work my way back out. Should be um, you know four feet to the center from the outside of the po of the uh, plate. Right, it's gonna come down to me a little bit. Yeah, if it looks good to you, I would fire that in. We've got to push this out again. Yeah. Yeah, it's gonna be it's a great little porch to hang out on, you know what I mean? Oh, yeah. We're gonna put a, you know, that same tongue and groove decking that we put on the floor mm -hmm. up above this, so it'll have that kind of wood ceiling oh, awesome. look to it. All right, guy. Up and flip again. Up and flip. Oh no, look at this block. It's not in the right spot at all. Ready, Rusty? Yeah. Just, you know, moral support, kind I'm words. I'm here for you guys. I mean, would you look at Clayton? Clayton's. Holy. And this fashion statement that he's got going with the duct tape. I love it. in just a little bit good yeah so what i'm doing is checking this seam okay but then i also want to look here and there see how it's kind of a little open there and it's pretty pretty wide open on the inside so you're just trying to get the best fit uh it's got to come in this way a little bit clate yeah i like to put one here you know, pretty far away from the drill. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then another one up oh, and into yeah, that. Kind of yep. Got We've got a power plane in the trailer. I think so. I think it's the six. six. I think we probably ought to trim. trim that. Yeah, trim these as we go. Yep. So just try and, you know, stay away from those nails. Try and stay yeah, right. just on that.
time. So offensive. So Gabe, would you mind uh, helping us? Now that you've been unencumbered. Can you, uh, this next one we do, can I get a video of you doing everything from the nailing to the drilling? You betcha guy. Right. Oh yeah. Oh sure. So be quick but accurate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay guy. That was rude. Rude. Oh, I did it my way. All right, this is gonna be the hardest one. People might die, we're not sure yet. Got it. Oh yeah, that's a good one. May have just popped something inside of my skull. All right, so top plate. Yeah, um, this is the center line. Okay. So if you go just outboard of this, okay. but on one of them go, you know, eight inches further than the other one, so it hangs on an angle, that makes it a lot easier to set. Gotcha. You know what I mean? Sure. You hearing me? I feel like we're really making a connection this morning.
A problem that we often run into when we're timber framing is we want to get a surface way up in the air directly over a surface down on the foundation. Often the distance is so great that we can't use a level. And also we don't usually have a timber running between the rafter and the floor, for instance, that we can put a level against. We use a device called a plumb bob. It's called a plumb bob because the earlier versions of the plumb bob actually used a lead weight and plumb is Latin for lead. Lead is handy because it's heavy and it tends to very quickly settle at the end of a string. So in this frame, we used a plumb bob hanging off the rafter to make sure that the rafter was directly over the carrying beam below it. All we do is climb up a ladder and let this string with a plumb bob dangle down until it's a half an inch or so above the beam. We give it a few minutes to settle. It will generally move back and forth a little bit. And then we can just manipulate the rafter in or out to make sure that the outside surface of the rafter is directly over the outside surface of the beam. As we're assembling the bents, we install all of the pegs that we can on the ground, but some of the connections can't be completed on the ground. So after we stand a bent up, for instance, we install a rim joist and there is a brace that springs off of the post and up to that rim joist. We can install that on the ground. We have to do it once it's up in the air after the bent is standing. So Koi is going around and drilling those holes and installing pegs. So right now what I'm doing is I'm going through and I'm making sure that all the wire chases are cleared out of any expanding foam. Because when we go and we make sure we have a full insulation envelope here, what happens sometimes is the expanding foam will expand into the wire chases. A lot of electricians don't really work with this type of framework. So we don't want to give them a reason to be upset about working on it. We want to make sure we clear out all those wire chases so they can come in and put their wires and make it easier for them. Ready? Chop it. Yeah, we need a mental victory. Oh, shoot. I could use some ammo. I'm really gonna put these in. That's not a grunt. Sometimes when I'm on the roof, I wish I wasn't a giant. If you could do it all over again, Gabe, you'd be a lot smaller. Well, no, because I still want to be able to win street fights. How many street fights do you get into? It's not about how many you get into, it's about how many you win. Uh, and I win all of them. Where's the end of this board? Stacking loose boards on this bay. My favorite things to sing about are love and sorrow. Love and sorrow. Sometimes I'll just sing for hours about boards. But mostly it's love and sorrow. Heartbreak. Have you ever experienced love and sorrow? It's really something. Never felt feelings at all. I'm just laughing my, my literal butt off.
On a project like this, where we are working very hard to move the project forward, inevitably there's a lot of cleanup at the end of the job. So we spent a fair bit of time today just picking up the job site, organizing the waste. So we have piles of gypsum, we have piles of wood. All of the SIP bundles come wrapped in plastic, so we have isolated those as well, trying to make it as easy as possible for the homeowner or general contractor to take care of the stuff that we leave behind. We were here today when Kimberly came out to see the finished product. She was ecstatic. We were obviously happy to see that. She walked through the building. She's very happy with the way the timbers look, the size of the building, the garage. I think probably more than anything though, she's happy that we've gotten to this point and we're getting ready to move out so the next round of work can begin towards getting her a completed home at the end of day seven on our Woolwich build and we have wrapped up the project. We have that wonderful sense of satisfaction from completing this job. In the next video, we're gonna do a walkthrough of both the garage, the house, and the studio. And I'm gonna bring along Ethan, our project manager and designer, and Gabe, who is our shop foreman. So he was in charge of cutting both of the timber frames for this project. Thanks for watching, and if you liked this video, don't forget to hit that like button, and also don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss out on any of our content in the future. If you've liked what you've seen in these videos and you're interested in timber framing, check out the link below to our online timber framing class. We do have a free mini version for that online course, so you can check it out at no expense and see if it's something that you're interested in. If you've enjoyed watching this series, check out our other build series at the link below.